Hello and welcome to the next in my series of studies in John's Gospel. If you're watching this near to publication or near to us releasing it, you'll be expecting me to talk about Christmas because this is Christmas week. However, uh, I'm just chuntering my way through John and uh, enjoying the fact that this verse isn't particularly about Christmas and it adds a bit of a dimension. And you may be watching this at another time in the year anyway, so that's no problem. It's a, one of those lovely tricky verses to try and understand, John 12, 25, where Jesus talks about hating life. And it raises the question, is it okay to enjoy life? What does he mean when he says those who hate their life in this world will keep it, but those who love their life will lose it? What does he mean? Does he mean we are to not enjoy living? Are we to be... Um, we're going around punishing ourselves and withdrawing from anything that might be enjoyable. Well, let's have a look at the context and try and explain it a little more. In uh, John 12, Jesus has talked about the hour has arrived for him to be glorified, by which he means that he is going to go to the cross and that he is going to die and be resurrected. And he talks about a seed falling into the ground and dying. And it's in that context of the thinking about his death and the uh, impending Passion Week that's coming that he says those who love their life will lose it, while those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So how do we understand? What does it mean to hate life? Well, the first thing to understand is that sometimes the Bible uses the word hate as a strong contrast with the word love. It doesn't necessarily mean to loathe and despise and to be angry with. It sometimes just simply is used as a way of creating contrast that encourages to think about the word love. So Jesus is not immune to using provocative hyperboles, and he does that on a number of other occasions where he says things with exaggerated meaning to get us to listen. That doesn't mean it's untrue, it's just a way of speaking. However, in this passage, there is, I think, a dimension that we're to hate, and I'm going to try and explain that in a moment or two. But what's important to understand is when we harmonize and take things in the context of the rest of the New Testament, the rest of what Jesus says, is that we are to seek the life that Jesus brings of joy, of peace, of shalom. Earlier in John's gospel, John tells us of Jesus saying that he's come into the world uh, that we might have life. And this is in contrast to the thief, the evil one who destroys life. But Jesus is saying that we have life, but then he talks about it overflowing, life to the full, abundant life. So this is not about literally hating our lives. It's not about self-harming. It's not about suicide. It's not about depression. It's not about saying we are to feel guilty if anything's enjoyable. We are to feel guilty if we feel at peace. We are to feel guilty if we're happy. It's not saying that at all. The key to understanding, I think, is to, to look at this phrase, their life in this world, and to put the emphasis on their. This is about people who putting their own control, agenda, priorities, their own way of living first in a, a perspective that is just about this world and has no sense of eternal thinking and no sense of reference to God and his purposes and his ways. So he's saying that there is a danger of loving our own self-centered lives so much that we put our own agendas before anybody else. Now, those agendas might be power and wanting to lord it over and control others and to influence others. It might be acclaim and wanting to be noticed and popular and appreciated. It might be the agenda of an easy life of just wanting everything to be comfortable and just with no sacrifice or difficulty. Sometimes the agenda that people have is of revenge and they're driven by wanting to get other people back. And this is a life that is of this world. It is not of the kingdom of God. It is not of the kingdom of heaven. Another way of looking at it is the motives that are opposed to God's purposes of love. And we are to hate rather than love, uh, motives that are, that, that are damaging to other people. That might be greed, it might be lust, it might be apathy. 
another way of looking at it is the thing that we are to, to beware against in our lives is the actions that help self to the detriment of others, putting ourselves as more important than other people. And that may be aggression, that may be manipulation, that may be accumulation. In short, we're talking about a way of love found only in this world and excluded from heaven. So let me try and put it this way. Loving our life in this world means loving living without the values and purposes of heaven's life. And Jesus says if that's the way we live, we live all for now and all for our own self-centered agenda and motives and purposes, we will lose our life. Whereas hating our life in this world is hating in ourselves when we see the values and purposes of this world which are opposed to the values of heaven. In other words, we're talking about hating within ourselves a selfishness which hurts others. And that might be apathy. That might be greed. That might be pride. That might be judging or discriminating against others. It might be aggression or manipulation or trying to get people to do what we want. It might be resentment or bitterness. And these are things that are not allowed in heaven. And so when we love these things, we are excluding ourselves from heaven. And so Jesus says that in order to have eternal life, to keep our life, we need to hate these tendencies that may be part of us. And we need to battle with them. So what does that mean? Well, we're talking about perhaps hating selfishness. It will mean repentance. Repentance of apathy. And therefore choosing and desiring compassion and service. If we love apathy and we love not caring about what's going in the world, on in the world, we will lose eternal life. We will not gain what Jesus has for us. But if we repent of it, and choose and desire to be a compassionate person and to serve others, then we are preparing for eternal life. Hating selfishness means repenting of greed and choosing and desiring generosity and simplicity. And these are the marks then of true repentance. It's not, we're not talking about getting saved because we do these things. We're saying that the fruit of God's spirit within us will produce this, that we battle with greed and we desire generosity and simplicity. And we battle with pride and we choose and desire anonymity. We don't want to be thanked. We don't want to be the center of attention. And we confess and are able to see our own faults. We are able to humbly admit our failings. We know our weakness. And this is what it means to hate the, wrong, the, the, the pride in our life. When we hate pride in our life, we, we choose to do things without praise. And we choose to acknowledge our sin and confess it. Hating selfishness will mean repenting of judging and discrimination and choosing and desiring mercy and welcome. Choosing to treat the stranger uh, as a valued and, and welcome person in our life rather than judging them by their color or their clothes or their gender or their age or their sexuality. But seeking to show mercy and compassion and welcome. Hating selfishness will mean repenting of aggression and manipulation and choosing and desiring self-control and gentleness. Hating selfishness will mean repenting of resentment and bitterness and choosing and desiring grace and hope and wanting to look forward and not clinging on to the hurts of the past but wanting to look forward and model the grace of God and to look forward with hope. And Jesus says, if you want to keep your life, then these are the things that we need to hate. And if we do that, we will live life to the full. And there will be joy in life. So this verse is not saying it's wrong to be happy. It's saying, do not be happy at the wrong things. Do not be happy at the values of this world that are temporary and will be excluded from heaven. 
But when you see those at work in your life rooted and growing out of selfishness, then be ruthless with them and hate them. And love the values of the kingdom of God that he wants to place in our lives. And Jesus concludes by saying, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. He says, in other words, he's saying, this is my life. I have chosen to serve others. I've chosen to go to the cross for others. And if you want to follow me, then this is the way of life that you must choose. And my Father will honor the one who serves me. And we need to hold in harmony the concept that Jesus has died on a cross that, uh, to take away our sin. That means that we can't ever achieve by striving to be goodness. We can't ever achieve heaven. And we hold that in balance with Jesus saying, look, if this confession and repentance is real, then it will lead to evidence of you wanting to be different, of you hating the stuff in your life that's not of God. So we're not saved by being good, but the evidence that we've responded to Jesus is we no longer want the bad stuff in our lives. So here are some questions for reflection. Do we hate or repent of, or do we love, accept, or excuse within ourselves apathy? Do we hate apathy? Do we repent of it? Or do we love not caring and excuse it? That's the question that Jesus is asking of us. Do we hate or do we love greed? Do we hate or do we love pride? Do we hate or do we love just judging and discrimination? Do we hate or do we love aggression and manipulation? Do we hate or do we love resentment and bitterness? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the model and example you have shown us of your self-sacrificing care. And we know that that is the life that is a, a fullness of life, that in that lifestyle, we will find joy. And Lord, you know the selfishness that creeps into our pattern of thinking. And Lord, we do hate that. And we do ask that you would cleanse us from it, reveal it and remove it. We choose your life. We love the purposes and values and lifestyle of the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we choose. So lead us from this place to, to desire what is on your heart. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.